Greetings, my name is Jenny Lynn Hall. Zee Morvitz and I co-direct the Visiting Artist Space here at Gallery Route 1. We select artists who are working with three basic themes, um, environmental issues, social justice, and immigration. Uh, the Visiting Artist Program was founded as project space focusing exclusively on environmental issues and we have since expanded to other, other concerns that we think are relevant to what's going on in the world we're all living in. We're really thrilled to have Dale Eastman here. She's a San Francisco-based artist that explores the materiality of computer capacitors in natural forms and what that represents. Um, and she just comes up with work that's incredibly well-crafted and, and original. So we're really hoping that you will come by and see Dale Eastman's take on intimate entanglements. My name is Dale Eastman, and this is my exhibit at GRO entitled Intimate Entanglements. Thanks for coming. There are 17 pieces in the exhibit, which is really exciting for me. These have been in process over the last decade. What's really interesting is that all these pieces started with words. I'm also a fiction writer, and about 12 years ago, I was working on a novel. I was, I think, about three years into the novel, um, and I was a little brain dead. Uh, I think I'd actually lost feeling in my body, and late one night, I could feel my brain hovering above me and the light from the computer screen just emanating. It felt very otherworldly, and alarmingly disconnected. So what I did was I took a finger and I pressed one of the buttons on the keyboard just to reconnect myself to the computer and a letter came up on the screen. And that was sort of fascinating because it reminded me that I do have a body, I am connected to this computer that is helping me write a story um, and that was grounding. From there I decided let's take apart the computer Let's see how my finger pressing a button makes a letter appear on the screen. And really that started all of this because when I took the computer apart, I found something very unexpected. Excuse me. I found something very organic. These are computer capacitors. Uh, they're ceramic capacitors. And when I pulled out the circuit boards and motherboards from inside the computer, I discovered how organic these materials were. The colors, they have a clay-like quality. They almost look like they could be seeds. And it really surprised me. Um, and I fell in love with them because once again, it connected me to the ground, took me out of my mind, brought me back into my body. I didn't quite know what I was going to do with them at that point, but I was really, really excited. Um, at the same time, as I was working on the novel, I was uh, working for a winemaker. And every year we would go up to his vineyards, and I used to look at these enormous pieces of grapevine out in the field. And they were so rhizomatic and just reaching out in tenderly ways that were mesmerizing. Um, and they actually reminded me in a more organic way of the circuit boards that I had pulled out of the computer. So suddenly these two very dissimilar materials got connected in my mind. That was even more exciting. <laughs> Um, the next step was trying to find a way to connect these materials. And I, because I'd been a seamstress when I was quite young, I thought of thread, but it didn't seem strong enough. So a friend suggested that she knew a website where I could find linen covered wire, which suddenly seemed like that would be strong enough. I went to the website bought the linen covered wire, but what I also discovered was something that I initially thought were golden nuggets. When I expanded the image, I found out they weren't golden nuggets, they were moth cocoons that were the most astonishing natural color of gold. 
So I bought a packet of those and, um, and they arrived. That was a little disappointing because they were flattened and dried. So they didn't look like what I expected. So I spent some time experimenting, rehydrating them, um, and then they just, they blossomed. And um, I cut the cocoons in half to give me like a half shell that I could sew with. And then that took me back to my, you know, roots as a seamstress. So for the next, gosh, three, four years, I spent hand sewing these moth cocoon pieces. Some of the pieces took as long as a year. Uh, another piece took nine months. Um, and it was a deeply, deeply involving experience. Sometimes I was literally inside the cocoons as I was sewing them. Um, at some point, uh, I worked to bring back the capacitors into the project. So a number of the cocoon pieces have the capacitors sewn onto them. Um, there's one piece in particular, the one that you're seeing now that I'm really in love with, has sort of a mummy-like quality to it. And the, the capacitors take on a mosaic um, Persian patterning that um, I think is really, really beautiful. I use those same capacitors in this much larger cocoon piece. This is called The Seeds Were Laid Long Ago, and, and the patterning here is even more dramatic. Um, this piece, too, took about a year to hand sew. So while I was inside all of these cocoons, literally feeling like I was a larvae, um, I got the idea that I could start sketching some forms that used the patterning and forms of the cocoon that I'd been working with, but also had a biomorphic quality um, where I was introducing more of a, a human form into the drawings. Um, and that was, it was really, really exciting having a, a pen in my hand uh, once again really connected me to the work, to the paper, and, um, and just gave a whole different dimension to the work. Uh, some people who've seen the drawings have said uh, they're beautiful and disturbing, um, <laughs> um, which I'm not sure that's what I was going for, but, but that's, a, that's a strong response. Um, the last pieces to come to this show are the one you're looking at now. Um, and, and this is made, again, from uh, computer capacitors. It has a ceramic body. And then I've been working with amazing metal workers in Oakland, Splady Arts Studios, to make these brass collars. Uh, and there's a second piece in the show which has uh, a green head and it also has a brass collar. Um, here are some of the pieces that are built strictly from capacitors. These were some of the last pieces to be built as well. It actually came out of my spending time in Point Reyes. Um, when I come up here, I love to go out in the wetlands and walk. And there was one particular day where the, the grasses were high and they were blowing every which way. Um, and I came back to my studio and tried to recreate that look. Anyway, this is intimate entanglements. We're all connected. We're not disconnected. I know we're all feeling that right now, but we're very much connected. And if you come to the show, I think you're going to feel that too. Thank you. Hi, I'm Stephen Hurwitz, and this is my show, Following Orders. I'm very happy that you're able to join me. Uh, let me say a little bit about my work. Um, these are all acrylic paint on plywood. And I like the plywood because it absorbs the color in a way that gives it a very soft texture. And that's something that I sort of discovered about that wood, and I like it quite a bit. Um, I, these works were all done this year. They're all 
dated 2023. And um, there's really four groups. There's a the 30 by 30 large group of painted wood stripes. Each stripe is painted separately and they're all assembled. And uh, they're really about color and they're about order, which is how I came up with following orders. In fact, the whole show is really uh, quite a bit about orderliness and and uh, different ways of looking at order. Um, I really create a set of rules when I do these, and these particular paintings follow a uh, a direction that all lines are going to be vertical. Um, they're all going to be harmonious. There, there will be no references to anything other than themselves. Essentially, that is a, probably a theme that goes through the whole thing. There's two different real color stories here. And the background behind those, is I did a series of paintings uh, I called my COVID colors. And these, these three that you're looking at right now are really an extension of those dark uh, gray colors that really sort of exemplified that period of time. And those were the colors that resonated for me at that time. And in terms of color, it's hard for me to choose the colors. Uh, I, I mix colors and if they resonate, then uh, I can use them. If not, I, it's just like, oh, I hate that color. These particular ones that you're looking at, I, I changed the, the rule, so to speak, and I took the straight lines and I made them dynamic. So the vertical, uh, enforcing the vertical rule uh, was tossed out, and now I added motion to these. And you can see the colors have become brighter and the bright colors are really the ones that resonate with me right now. Uh, just like in the larger paintings, uh, I really moved towards the brights. Those were the colors that satisfied me. And I have to say I'm happy about that. I'm out of my COVID, COVID doldrums, so to speak. A, a little bit about these ones that you just looked at. They are, they're sort of like a dynamic that I did. I would, I would organize these in a very uh, organized pattern, and then I would start pushing them around. And uh, by pushing them around, I'd find pretty much uh, where I wanted them to be. So in some sense, I would say all the pieces in this show are in agreement between myself and the pieces themselves. Uh, in a way, I created my own found objects and then worked with what I found. I don't know if you can understand that, but that's how it works for me. The ones that Shelly is showing you right now are all constructed with pieces that I made testing colors. I would be developing color stories and I would just put little uh, paint on different color chips, I call them. And then I have stacks of, I have hundreds of these and I decided that I would start trying to assemble those in, uh, you know, fun, I call them play things. I was just playing around. And that's pretty much the intention that they be uh, lighthearted. And uh, I'm real happy with the way those turned out. And again, though, there, I'm after harmony only this time. And all these that you're looking at is the idea of bringing harmony and balance from things that are discordant, whereas the large, austere paintings uh, really they were I would say they are uh, meant to be uh, balancing themselves I enjoyed working on these I try and make my studio a happy place uh, a, a lot of this uh, is influenced by music that I was listening to. I usually have music and sometimes I'll uh, begin a session in my studio with movement, which is a nice way to loosen up. And there you see it. Last 10 months of work and I'm pretty happy with it and I hope you enjoy it too.
Good afternoon, my name is Austin Buckingham. I'm an artist member at Gallery Route 1. I will be showing you the exhibition in the Annex Gallery. My exhibition is titled, It is Born, Ocean in Winter. Um, I started with uh, this poem right here by Pablo Neruda called, It is Born. And uh, from that title, I began to conceive a particular uh, kind of interpretation of the ocean. One of the reasons why I really wanted to move to California was to have a daily interaction and experience uh, with, with the ocean. Um, I am not only exploring the, the theme of the ocean and how I perceive it and how it feels for me, but I um, also like to explore various uh, techniques um, as I prepare these uh, monotype artworks. Uh, what I specifically wanted to explore here was uh, texture, transparency, and uh, to borrow a term from uh, photography, depth of field. Um, monotypes lend itself to a very graphic representation, and I'm trying to expand my repertoire of technique by looking at different, uh, utilizing different textural elements and also having some faint uh, shapes in the background that help speak to the overall depth of the, the composition. With this work that's hanging on the wall, um, it's a, a sculpture. Um, I've only recently been exploring sculpture. I like uh, sculpture not only because of its obvious three-dimensional uh, characteristic, but because I can play with some various uh, technical aspects, and that has to do with uh, the mass, the volume. I like to try to cantilever something off the wall in this particular case. Um, some of the parts are um, movable, so there's also a kinetic element. I chose these shapes because I wanted to echo the clouds in the monotype uh, artworks. And uh, these two uh, prints right here are a continuation of the series that I started on the, the first wall of, uh, again, my experience uh, with uh, the impact of the ocean, how it uh, draws me into its uh, chaotic, uh, sometimes sense of danger, but also has such a therapeutic uh, uh, sense of serenity. We hope to see you at Gallery Route 1. There are three excellent uh, shows uh, being presented right now. Please come see us at Gallery Route 1 and Point Ray Station. Thank you.